I'm Sarah with the Blight Public Library, and welcome to our next edition of the Library Shorts video. Um, this month we are featuring the Big Reads selection book, which is A Map into the World by Kao Kalia Yang. And one interesting thing I found out about her name is that it means a girl with dimples in Hmong. And a lot of her friends and family just call her Kalia, which means dimples. And I thought that was really cute. So this book is um, just when you first open the cover, um, the end papers are really interesting because it features some traditional Hmong needlework, and that's called Ban Dao. And this is a story cloth, and it tells the story of Hmong experiences and history. And um, I actually had one of these needle points hanging up in my dining room as a child. My mom bought it from a Hmong American woman. There's actually quite a large population of Hmong Americans in Wisconsin. There's about 50,000. So you might see some of these story cloths at like an art fair or something. So it's just definitely something cool about their culture to check out. Um, in the story, the um, grandmother and the granddaughter hang up their story cloth in their new home and they meet their new neighbors, this elderly couple that lives across the street. And um, this story is about friendship and a new neighborhood, but it's also about loss because the, um, the, the grandmother or the older lady that lives across the street, she ends up passing away. And so they have to go over and talk to the elderly man to kind of comfort him and check in on him and see how he's doing. The little, little girl, she starts drawing a picture on the sidewalk for him. And this picture turns into a beautiful artwork that spreads all across the sidewalk. And he says, what did you draw for me? And she said, a map into the world just in case you need it. So it was a great way of expressing her feelings. At the end you see the, the neighbor and the little girl hugging and it's a very heartwarming story. I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, and when I was thinking about how I could connect this book to music, I was thinking about how she really used that chalk drawing to express her feelings. And we can do the same thing with music. Um, in the handout that I have for you, I have some different links to different songs, and I invite you to grab some paper, pencils, markers, paint, whatever you have on hand, and to listen to some of these songs and just draw how it makes you feel. And you'll notice that you know some of these drawings are going to be very different than others depending on how the music makes you feel. So you can kind of compare those and talk about it with your family and, and see what you come up with. Um, another cool thing I found while researching Hmong culture is this Hmong instrument, and it's called a glang, and it's made out of bamboo kind of pipes, and it's in an L shape, and it's been compared to Scottish bagpipes without the bags, and there's a great link to a video here that shows a man talking more about this instrument and how it works, and then he plays a beautiful song on it. So um, this instrument is sacred in Hmong culture, and I would really recommend you checking that out. Um, the author, Kao Kalia Yang, also has a new book out called The Most Beautiful Thing. So check out this book and her new book. And I also have a couple other book recommendations. I was really excited to learn about this new series called Astrid and Apollo. And these are early chapter books. They're easy read chapter books, five, cha five chapters per book. And they feature a Hmong American family. And what's really cool is that they have a little glossary of some Hmong words in the beginning and how to pronounce them so you can learn a few Hmong words. And they have some really great illustrations. And they're great for your first beginning readers. Another cool book we have in our collection is Ka's Garden, and this is actually completely bilingual in Hmong and English, which I think is really, really interesting. There's a pronunciation guide here, and this is all about how gardening is so important in Hmong culture and their way of life. And at the 
very end it also has some family words of wisdom that are traditional in the Hmong culture. And since April is a great time to start a garden, that might be of interest to you to read. I think it's a great book. And I'm going to read one book with you guys today. And this is all about sound. And this kind of ties in all the things we've already been talking about in these little library short music video lessons. Um, but I really like the way that this book very concisely um, talks about some of these concepts in music. So, how are sounds made? A baseball smacks against a wooden bat, thwack. Raindrops tap against your window, pitter-patter, pitter-patter, pitter-patter. How are sounds made? Tap a musical triangle. You can see it shake. As the triangle vibrates, it makes a sound. Sound is made from vibrating things. So, this is a really fun fact. If you place your hand right on your vocal cords here, and then you hum, you can actually feel your vocal cords vibrating. It's really, really cool. So try, try that out. Throw a pebble into a pond. Watch how the ripples move away from the splash. Sound moves in waves like ripples in the pond. Sound waves move in all directions, from a baseball bat, a raindrop, or anything else that makes sound. The waves travel through the air to your ears, but you can't see them. Sound waves are invisible. What makes an echo? Well, if you stand inside a big empty room and then shout your name, it sounds as if someone is saying your name back at you. You have made an echo. Echoes are made when sound waves bounce off big, hard things like walls or mountains. When the sound bounces back to you, you'll hear it again. So that's how bats hear in those dark caves. They use echolocation and they make really squeaky sounds that bounce off the sides of the cave walls. And then they know, um, then they don't smack into the walls when they're flying around. So why are some sounds loud and others soft? Well, if you throw a pebble hard into the water, it makes big waves that travel far. When you bang a drum hard, the drum booms loudly. It makes, a, it makes big sound waves that travel far. If you tap the drum lightly, it rumbles softly. The sound waves are smaller and do not go as far. But make sure you're careful with loud noises because they can damage your ears, your hearing. Sometimes the sound is loud because you are close to it. Even a whisper sounds loud if someone is whispering right in your ear. The roar of an airplane would be really loud if you were standing right next to the airplane, but when it's far up in the sky, it sounds soft. You can make a sound seem softer or louder. So if you put your hands over your ears, the sound seems softer. If you cup your hand around your ear, you can catch more sound waves and the sound seems louder. That's what we did with those sound cones we made. Um, you can go back and watch that video if you haven't already seen it. Sometimes people say, turn down the volume. That means they want the sound softened. Volume is another word for loudness. Why are some sounds high and others low? Well, if you pluck the thinnest, tightest string on a guitar, you can see it vibrate very quickly. Listen to the sound it makes. Things that vibrate quickly make high-pitched sounds. The thickest string on a guitar vibrates more slowly. It makes a low-pitched sound. Now you know all about sound. Loud, soft, high, and low. What kinds of sounds can you make? So you can really think about different sounds you can make, what the highest sound you've ever heard is, what the lowest sound is, what's the loudest or softest sounds you've ever heard. It is really fun to experiment with sound and music. All right, so I have a little experiment you can do at home if you have three drinking glasses. I've used three bigger pitchers here just for the sake of the video, but you can just use three drinking glasses as long as they're real glass, not plastic. 
and you can try filling them to different um, heights. And you can put some food coloring in if you want. You don't have to, but I just thought that was kind of fun. And so yeah, try filling one glass almost full. Try filling the next glass, you know, maybe three quarters-ish full. And maybe, you know, the last glass you don't feel very full at all. And just see what kind of sounds you can make. So they all have different sounds, right? But why? Why are they different? Which one is higher and which one's lower? So we kind of have bum, bum, bum. So to me, that sounds like this one is the highest pitch. Bum. And it also is the one with the least amount of water. So why do you think that is? Well, the one with the most water, more water it has, the less the glass is going to be vibrating because that water is muffling the sound waves, right? And so the glass on these are vibrating quicker, and that's what's making the higher pitch sound. So we could do bum 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 So yeah, you can try exper experimenting with this by you know trying to get different pitches just by pouring out a little bit more water or adding a little bit more water, getting some more glasses going. You can see if maybe you could create a whole scale or just your you know a favorite little tune by doing this. So it's just kind of a fun experiment and gets you thinking about um, pitch and vibration in a different way. So I invite you to try that. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out all the other library short videos this month. And have a great day. I hope to see you at the library soon.